All right, good morning. It's Michelle here and welcome to how to configure SharePoint to drive effective records management webinar. So uh, I'll be covering a couple of things today, pretty much um, how to make SharePoint work best for you, not only if you're a records manager, but also as a general user and setting it up so that uh, everybody actually wants to use SharePoint as opposed to not wanting to use SharePoint. I'll cover things like um, SharePoint itself and some of the things that you see within it, um, naming conventions, metadata, content types, so the ability to create content types to drive some records retention, as well as you know keeping records managers um, happy, those ones of you who may be online. Creating of links and how to use that to make sure content is shared as opposed to duplicated. And enabling um, some other functions, which I'll show you as well. Um, probably go through the difference between classic and new in SharePoint, file explorer and using Office, uh, making sure your Office versions actually work with your SharePoint to make it easier to save everything and probably go through also check in and check out and why people turn it on and why you don't turn it on. So depending on your collaboration needs. So let's jump right in. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to email them or just to pop them into the chat while we're going. And the webinar will be up on the McTish website uh, shortly. So if you just have a look at my screen at the moment, this is uh, SharePoint. We currently at McTish, what I'm demonstrating to you on is Office 365, so SharePoint Online. This is a modern site. So what I've done is put, uh, in this case, uh, just a little bit of a prettier overlay on top of my SharePoint space just to make it look a little bit nicer. What you'll find when people start using SharePoint or when you're asking them to use SharePoint is they think that being able to manage content or manage records effectively is to simply duplicate their file share system that they have in SharePoint, which is nice for them, but not nice for managing records or for finding information. So if you look up the top here, I have some tabs. One says folders. And one up here says demonstration site SP webinar. Those are actually the two libraries that I have along the left hand side here. I've just put them there because it's um, you know a lot easier <laughs> for me to get to them than clicking in and out of everything. I'm just going to go into folders for a minute because this is how people think uh, content should be managed and think that if they manage it like this from a records point of view or from an information point of view, this is the best way to do it. Um, sadly, it isn't. As much as we might like folders, we've got uh, five of them here. In order to see what is inside anything, I actually have to open the folder, as all of you will know, to find a document. Now, a couple of times you may do that and there'll be nothing inside the document, inside the library, I mean. So you have library, you have a folder, and here's a meeting, and then here's another meeting, and you just gotta hope that the right information is inside that folder. Um, one of the other things about folders is if you have a look here at the moment, you can't tell, ex you can tell the kind of information that should be in there. However, from a records point of view, unless it also has the word administration or the word finance attached to the title of a document, I won't be able to manage it as a record. I think of it, I normally use the analogy like this. If you were carrying five folders that all had this name, paper folders, carrying them in your arms, walking to a meeting and you tripped and fell and all the contents that were in these folders that you were carrying fell out on the floor, how will you know which folder all the documents lying on the floor belong to? So that is how you start thinking about configuring the information to make it more record centric or more specific to finding as well because the more inf the more information you can attach to a document, the easier it is to search for it, the easier it is to not duplicate it. Um, you don't start copying information in five different places. It's easy to find. One of the quickest ways, if you are a, I'll do this from two points of view, if you're a SharePoint person, the quickest way to disable this, to stop people creating folders and having a wonderful time, is up in the bar up here. See here called new folder? If you manage your own SharePoint environment or if you have some IT guys who manage your SharePoint for you, just ask them to go in and on any specific library, turn that option off. It's not hard to do, but if you do turn it off, you need to then start thinking about making sure that people can start putting information into a space and, and actually identifying what that is. 
So I'm going to just, for instance, go into my meeting set for a minute and then go into project meetings and there's nothing. So again, just the clicking backwards and forwards. Now, I think the one that had something in it in meetings was board meeting. Here we go. And this is just called minutes. Now, again, unless I attach the word board into here, into the name, I won't know that these minutes belong to the board meeting minutes. And this is where things like metadata become really powerful. So metadata, one really good way of thinking about that is when you do online shopping, you have to put in criteria to find what you're looking for. I want a coat. I want a woolen coat. I want a red woolen coat. And it starts narrowing down the scope of your search. It's the same thing with the metadata in SharePoint. The more information you attach to a document, the easier it will be for everybody to find everything. So let's go back to folders for a minute so we can all remember how much we don't want this to happen, if that's okay. If I show you the, the following site, so the demonstration site that I have up here called SP Webinar, what I've done here is I've actually turned on the modern view. So the old folder view, if I just go back for a moment, that is the old view that most people who've been using SharePoint a while will be quite used to. And this is the modern view. I've just shown it to you in two different ways. You actually have the ability, if you look down the bottom left-hand side here, to return this to being a classic SharePoint view. I'll do that just so you can see what changes. Not a big change, but I'll return it to that view just so you can see. There we go. Just looks, you know, not as cool, I guess, I suppose. So here is some, here is all the content, believe it or not, all the content that is in those that folder library which we were looking at before, all of this information is in folders there, but you'd never know it was there because it's so hard to find it. What we've done here is we've added two, if I have a look at these, these are called, um, these are content types, these are columns. For instance, it's actually SharePoint columns that I have set up right at the very top level so that when I put information into a library, I don't have to have a library full of folders in order to identify what kind of content it is. I can have one library that says, when you put it in here, if it's an agenda, tell me what division it's for and what type of document it is. Now you can have, as you can see, the document type is called agenda and the name of the document's called agenda. Don't worry about that for now. If you think about it, if you had board meeting or um, executive board agenda, you're able then to identify that it's an executive board. It could be for executive board, for finance and agenda. It doesn't matter if you have it twice. It just sometimes the document type will also enable you to start grouping things for records. So if you had policies and procedure and the division was HR, you would give it a retention or a records management focus. So for records managers, these columns are fantastic. From a SharePoint point of view, why they're fantastic, these columns are set up at the very, very top of SharePoint. So what that means is every single library or space within SharePoint, will, will you'd be able to add these columns to it. And this is what's known as managed metadata. You can also have um, your policies and procedures, for instance, underneath the doc type that when someone puts something in a library and identifies it as a policy, it can get some specific retention and you can write your rules to it. It also stops people identifying something as a policy versus a policies with an S on it, a spelling mistake in the word policy. It starts to become very easy for people just to drag and drop and click and pick the information for them using SharePoint, so the general user, but for a records point of view, it starts helping you manage your content a little bit better um, for uh, your retention schemes on the back. So. General SharePoint user will have no idea why these things, why you're so happy they're using them and how these things benefit you. What they will care about is how these things are benefiting them when they put it in because they'll be able to create things like views. Um, so show me everything belonging to finance or show me everything that's a business case. This isn't to say you can't have separate libraries for separate things. You absolutely can. But what this also, what this sort of stops you doing is having a library for agendas and a library for a business case and a library for registers where you have to go, it's almost like folders, into five or six different locations to try and find one thing. 
Um, I hope that makes a little bit of sense. So if you just so you understand from for your IT guys, if you've got someone who supports your SharePoint for you, those are site columns and they're created right at the top of SharePoint. And I've actually got what they call managed metadata behind them, which means you can control you or IT can control what information people select from. And that's really, really powerful in the long term. So if I wanted to, just as an example, I've got in here, his benefits register and register hasn't been identified. And this, look, it's in here twice. That's because it was in two different spots. It's actually got some slightly different things in it in the back. You can come in here and identify whether this was a business re benefits register for the PMO or if it's a ben be benefits register for admin. So you may have two things identified with the same name, but you now have the ability, you as the SharePoint user, to identify the division and the document type. Big win for you as the user, big win for the uh, records manager in the background who's going, why are there two documents called the same thing? How do I know how to manage it? So it becomes really powerful that way. One of the things I mentioned was um, being able to share information or when you find information, as a general user, this is a lot of the time what happens is I go searching. So I come up into SharePoint and I search up here in the site up in the top right hand side or I can search in here to find a file. And if I've been searching for a file for a very, very long time, what normally happens is as soon as I find it, I click down here and I go download because I've gone it took me so long to find this document I'm going to save it for myself the downside for this from a SharePoint point of view is that you will never know as a user if that document ever gets updated because you've only got the copy you've downloaded if you start to encourage people to use SharePoint and to start putting information into SharePoint a lot of the things you start having to focus on is naming conventions. So don't put something in a library or don't put something in SharePoint that's called draft, second draft, final draft, the draft before we PDF'd it, the draft before I made a spelling mistake, final, final PDF, because people will start thinking, well, I don't know which document to use. I'm just going to start again. A lot of the really important one of the really important things in SharePoint and with for records point of view is having a single source of truth and then again a single document think of it from the point of view of a policy if you have an HR policy stored in SharePoint and the HR policy argumentatively is about maternity leave and the maternity leave policy was created two years ago but just before the end of the tax year, they announced some changes to the maternity leave policy. The HR team go in and update the maternity leave policy. And from the 1st of July, there's a whole lot of new rules. If you still have a copy because you downloaded it of the old policy, that's the only one you're ever going to refer to. You're not going to know about any of the changes. However, if you create yourself a link to the document once you've found it. Now, this is a big thing. HR have to make sure they never rename their maternity leave policy. If they call it maternity leave policy and that's all it's called, once you link to it and they only ever update that one document, you'll always have the latest copy. So it's a double, sort of a little bit, bit of a double edged sword. It's about getting people to understand that once you've named a document, leave it that name. You don't have to ever edit it, just keep editing the same document and everyone will have it. And one of the best things that SharePoint has to enable you to do that is creating links. So you can create links to information that you found, whether it is on a website or whether it is a document. And as you can see here, I've got one that I prepared earlier, which was Michelle found it, which was a document that I found. But it is about setting up a content type in your library. And if you come up here, if I click on new, I have one that I created already called link to a document. Now, to be fair, I didn't change it to say link to anything. I just left it as link to a document because that actually works whether it's a document or a URL on a website. It doesn't matter what it is. It will link you to it. So if I just give you an example, I'm going to click on link to a document. I can type in here Google document or whatever it might be. And because I know the URL for Google, don't we all? 
right? I can put that in here and say, okay, whoopsie, enter a valid document name. Oh, see, look, HTTP. Moment, please. HTTP. Well, that'll, let's see if that's correct. No. I've, as usual, nothing goes smoothly, does it? So I'm going to actually go in here because I'm, hang on. If I go and find Google, And I copy that. Here we go. It's good that I'm making mistakes so you can see what the mistake is as well. Because I don't know about you, how many of you use the wrong slash? I always use the wrong one. There we go. Create a link. Say OK. Wait for it to catch up. And save. Right, so if I wait for my webinar to come back up, here it is, Google document. The power of this again, from two points of view. One is you as a user, once you've found a document, you can link to it. From a records point of view, you only really have one source of truth for the record. Everyone's working on the same document. It's updated all the version history, because that's another really powerful thing about SharePoint, is all retained on that document. So if I, I'm not sure of any of these, if I've opened some of them before, but any of them, like if I wanted to add information to here, if I come down to this, I can tick it here. As you know, with SharePoint, you can do anything, like, like five different ways to do something. If I click on this, I come up to my file, and I click on Edit Properties. I can now add some other information in here if I wanted to. I can change it to being a webinar document, which is what this is, and it now allows me. So webinar document is my content type that I had in there. My division for this is, if I said it's a VIP team, team meeting, these are metadata. This is saying you've got some things you can pick. If I click on that to have a look, for instance, It'll come into my division. This again is what I said to you that you may need to have um, your SharePoint administrator or your IT team actually set this up for you. A little bit of work involved in that, making sure, well, division wise, um, that you capture all the divisions you need. And um, from a document type perspective, it'll probably be a little bit of working with everyone to, to get your list. You don't want 500 document types to pick from. Ideally, you want to try and get a pretty condensed version of documents that people will use. So if I add PMO, as you can see, I have nothing else to choose from. I only have what is available here. I'm double clicking on the little tags to get to something. You can also type in, type in. So if I type the word planning, there it is. It's a document type called planning. I'll talk to you about this in a minute. I've left that there for a reason. I'll show you that in a moment. And I hit save. This is just showing you that you can retrospectively update your libraries. Ideally, you wouldn't want to be doing this, especially if you've got lots and lots of libraries. But if you start having the ability to add the division and add the document type to drive some records management pieces, it's not hard to go in and update that for you, one, as a user, or two, um, to drive your records management piece. I would recommend that these two items, if those are the ones that you're going to drive a lot of records from, become mandatory, which means that when someone puts information into this library, they have to answer those two questions. What division is it? and What type of document is it? As soon as they've done it once or twice, it becomes really easy. People know they're going to do it. With mandatory metadata, I'll put a caveat on, don't have any more than, I'd say five, even five is too much. If these two things can drive retention for you and get people to use SharePoint as well, that's probably a really, really easy way to start getting buy-in. A lot of people don't like SharePoint. Most people are given SharePoint and told, here you go, here's SharePoint, it's so easy to use, off you go. And it's not always easy to use, and it's not always intuitive. So the easier you make it and the more you explain why things are like this, the better it will be for everyone.
So just to show you one of the things that I had early up here, if I go File and I go New, I had something called a webinar document. I created that content type and inside that content type I have division and doc type. Where content types like that become really, really key is like for letterheads. I don't think I know any company now that actually has printed letterhead. Very few do. If you have an electronic letterhead that you want everybody to create documents from, or um, you have a specific type of font set that you want things done in, you can create a content type and link a template to it. So for instance, if I clicked on the webinar document, it would open me up a document that had some key features in it, whether it's the font or the address or your exactly your company letterhead. And you can call that company letterhead for people who need it. Also ties into things like PowerPoint presentations. If you have a set suite of PowerPoint presentations that you use all the time um, as a business and you don't want people to use anything else, this is where you can start driving people to use the content type or the template you want them to use. When you create content types like that, that is when you can embed things like division and document type into it, which means that when I use it, prompt me for this information. But if people don't use it, because a lot of people don't, a lot of people will go into Word and start typing and just creating documents. The other cool thing is when you drag and drop information into a library, you can say, if it's in here, make it one of these documents, and that's not very hard to do at all, and then they'll be forced to fill in this information. Again, you can Google how to do this if you don't have a lot of the SharePoint skill in-house, and it will show you how. As long as you have the permissions to do it, you would be able to create this. And I'd encourage you to test it out first to make sure it works for you, um, but bear something in mind, if you're going to create columns right at the top level of SharePoint, make sure their, their columns have got names that make sense to you as opposed to test and test one. If you've got a test environment, create things in there. It just makes it a lot easier for you to use. Now you will have some diehard people who like folders. They want folders, folders are the thing, folders solve everything. One of the cool things that SharePoint does have is something that's called a document set, which is pretty much a fancy folder. Benefit of a document set. I'm just going to go back into folders for a minute to show you. If I'm in my folder library and I add a column to here, if I add it, I'm going to modify my view for a minute and I'm going to add a column called content type and say OK. All right, here we go. Content type is folder. That's great. Because I'm in a library full of folders, the folders technically aren't recognized. That sounds really odd by SharePoint because when I go into administration, I have content type again. I have no ability to make my folder view look different to the library view that I have in folders. So in other words, if I, in human resources, I only wanted to add, actually wrong example, meetings, I only wanted to add a column that helped me identify whether it was a board meeting or an agenda. When I add the column, it will actually put it in every single folder I have because SharePoint sees all of this as one big library with some folders that you've added. Now, I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but when I show you why document sets are better, you might get it. In my library here, this is my library, all documents, I have a webinar division and a webinar doc type. But when I create a doc set, bearing in mind fancy folder, as soon as I click on my document set, just hold on, this is catching up to me a little bit today, I actually have two extra columns that you didn't see in the front, which is check in, comment, and checked out too. I have also added webinar division, but my view is different. So the cool thing about a document set versus a folder is that you can have a totally different view inside here compared to what the library has, which is a massive benefit because if your document set is about board meetings, don't you only want to be able to view things by agenda and minutes um, and whatever else there might be that you had as part of your board meeting? That makes a great difference to people who really like folders. Sometimes that's a big selling point to say to them, 
if you have a folder and you add whatever columns you have, it'll be everywhere. See, division and document type. But if you have some very key or specific things that you want in your document set view, which everybody does, it's like um, creating a view um, of your Outlook mail or anything else. Some people have very specific ways of viewing content. That's when document sets can become really powerful. So that is again, it's a content type that I created and it's up here in file, new webinar doc set. I can also go here, new webinar doc set. So document sets are very important for another reason, is if I have a doc set and it's called uh, recruitment and it's inside HR, every time it's in my HR library and I go create a recruitment document set, from a records point of view, I can now say if anything is in this doc set called recruitment because it's based on this content type, Keep it for 75 years. You can write a rule directly to a doc set. You cannot write a rule just to a folder. It doesn't translate the same. It doesn't recognize it as being a its own term. So recruitment document set gets a specific rule and anything else inside HR will get its own rule. Now for those of you who are SharePoint people, you won't, and I know it sounds horrible to the records people, you won't care. Records people will love that op the option of being able to create a specific grouping that says anything, anytime someone creates this, give it a specific rule on my record side. Bearing in mind, you'll just have to make sure you work together to update the processes with the people who are using SharePoint and what the requirements are. So that can be really powerful. If everybody understands the difference, they're more likely to start using it. Now I flick between classic and new. So again, this was the classic experience. And if I get out of classic, and come into new. All right, not a huge difference. Here's my document set. Still looks kind of the same. Bear, anybody who's using 365 and SharePoint Online, Microsoft make changes all the time. So I do believe that they have a plan eventually to retire, and I'm putting that in inverted commas, the classic view for SharePoint. So if you're using classic or if you're using um, the modern, be aware one day you might come in and everything might just look like this. But as you can see, the columns are still there and everything works the same. I'll just talk about check in and check out for a minute. And I'll just go back to the classic view for that for some of the people who might be used to seeing things that way. So check in, check out. Some people use check in, check out in their libraries um, and there are pros and cons for that. Checking something in and out works very similarly to your file share system where if someone is working on a, a document and they've opened it in Excel and they're working away, when you go in to use it, it comes and says, sorry, Michelle's got this checked out, right? Check in, check out in SharePoint is actually the same thing. If somebody checks it out and is working on it, it's exactly the same thing. You cannot work on it at the same time. If you have that check in, check out turned on, it means that when someone checks something in, they can start adding a lot of comments about information that they've added or changes that they've made. So if I am going to check this document, I can do it manually. You can turn it on as well. You can turn it on so you force things to be checked out or checked in when people are working on it. Let me just let it catch up to me for a minute. There it is. And here's checked out, right? I've checked this out. Let's pretend I've opened it and I'm busy working on it and I want to check it back in. So again with SharePoint, you can Microsoft everything. You can go five different ways to get it. I'll just go the easy way, which is up here in the ribbon. If I click on check in, I get prompted. Now this is where comments become powerful in SharePoint. Whether you have check in, check out turned on, or even if it's in collaboration, you can ask for people to put comments in. Now, if you put check in, check out on, I encourage people to use the comments field. It's so much more powerful for version history as well. I can say, um, boss asked me, asked me to change attendees list, right? And I can say, okay. And wait for it. It's going to catch up in a moment. What this does is if you turn on the comments column in a library, if you, as soon as you turn it on, 
you'll be able to see at a glance what stuff has changed. Like here's a few seconds ago. I can add that to this view. So if I come here and I just modify it and I turn on the comments and it's got to go all the way down. Can I just not see it for looking? Here it is, check in comment. Okay. This is good for two reasons. One, you, here we go, can see if, oh, hang on, Michelle edited this a minute ago. Why? Because the boss asked me to change the attendees list. Awesome for everyone using SharePoint. Records managers. As soon as something is updated in the system you're managing, this comment will actually also reflect in your record, which can be quite powerful when you're rolling it versions back, which you can do. But it's also really powerful um, from a records point of view if you need to see the history and what's happened to the record from start to finish. As you saw, I can manually check something in and check something out. This allows, like now, for instance, collaboration if it's not on, if it's not enforced, where people have to check things out and check things back in. If you have a team who says, oh, we want to be able to edit an Excel document or a Word, or everything at the same time, that's what we want. We want to be able to collaborate live and in real time. Check in, check out, mandatory check in, check out won't allow them to do that. So it, you have to start weighing it up as opposed to do you want everyone to collaborate and encourage them to put check in comments this way, or do you want people to check things out in order to edit it before they have to check it back in? Again, a little bit of a process change, you'd have to remind them to do it, to check the document in. Some cool things in SharePoint for those people, again, the diehards who really like folders, for instance, and are used to working with Explorer, you have in your ribbon the op option to open with Explorer. This allows you to do exactly that, open it in Explorer and have a look at it if they don't like the way it's viewed here. A lot of people who have, and I'll show you with this, the folders, all documents, they will love that because they'll immediately go library, open with Explorer because it's a warm, fuzzy, they're quite used to it. So that I've covered quite a lot of information there on, on how to configure things. So having content types, having site columns, which these are up at the top level of SharePoint and have them embedded into your content type, which is quite important. Naming conventions, and again, a lot of this is change. A lot of this is getting people to understand, give a document a name once, and every time you touch the document, the version will just remain. It's almost like um, uh, putting you know le sheaves of paper, one on top of the other on your desk. It's always the same piece of paper at the bottom, just modified versions of it on the top but it always has the same name. And that is a very powerful thing for sharing and two for records. You only have one version, which is fantastic. The other thing is with Office. So I'm just going to open Word for a minute. Uh, it's opening on my other screen. I'll just drag it over. Hold on a second. Here it is. I'm just gonna pick a new document. When you have SharePoint and you're working with SharePoint, no matter what version it is, 2010, 13, 16, it, SharePoint Online, it is really good to have the Office versions that you're using the same. So if you're using SharePoint 2016, have Office 2016. SharePoint Online actually uses 2016 as well, so that's okay. But it's always really good to have them working together, and that is because of what a very powerful thing, and again, SharePoint driving effective records management, but so does Office. If I create, and no, don't create that, a webinar test demo in Office document, right? And I now want to save it. The powerful thing about SharePoint, working with SharePoint and Office, is I can come into File, I can come into Save, and if you're working in the same version of Office and the same version of SharePoint, it starts showing you places you've been before, obviously your PC and other places, but it also shows you locations that you've worked in in SharePoint. I can come in and save information into SharePoint straight away. If I didn't know, oh, I'm looking at it going, oh, I'm not sure, I think this is it here, webinar, Double click on it and open my space because this is where I've been. 
here it is, McTish, the Science Record Point webinar. And here are all the documents that I've had, how to configure SharePoint. Here's my restricted doc set. I've gone into the one that had some of the folder view on it, so I can get rid of that if I wanted. But I can now call that webinar demo document and hit Oh, hang on, it doesn't want to let me do it. Moment, please. So I'm going to go back one. I'm going to go somewhere where I haven't been before. Here we go. And hit save. It's as easy as that. I've gone into it. I'm going, oh, that's not what I want to do. What is my content type? Again, remember I had in my other library, I had set up webinar document type. I could pick that say okay it would force me to add all the metadata i've just actually navigated to a space in my demo environment just to show you how easy it is to save stuff from office into sharepoint so the cool thing is if i just wait for it to catch up a second come back out to my environment over here and i would have to go i think it's in the documents here it is Hang on, it hasn't caught up yet. It'll catch up in a minute. Let me show it to you from the webinar minute. Okay, it'll catch up eventually. It's just a little bit slow today. I'm going to open this in Word. Let's wait for it to catch me. Here it is. Okay, that's a lot of blah, more things added. Uh, and I save it. If I come into file and I look at all my properties, I have a financial document, which is what I'd called it. I'd given it a finance tag. I can actually start seeing some of the important things that I care about in this document from SharePoint in the metadata in Word. So that's pretty cool. So if I just close that, because I don't want to keep it, and I'm going to close that again. When I come back in here, it will show it to me. Again, it'll catch up in a minute. Last but not least, you do not always have to give people columns to use. People, you should, I, I do feel, and, and this is me, there, there'll be some SharePoint people and other people who go, oh, no, 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 that shouldn't, let's not do that. Allow people to create columns sometimes, especially if you're going to take away the ability to create folders. Give people the ability to create their own column type that will help them. So if I think about meetings for, for a minute, I might want to, and if I've got here like this agenda, I might actually care what meeting agenda it is. And maybe we don't have the option here to give them these cool columns. If they have the ability to create their own, and I've already created one so you can see it. Let's just see if I can find it. There it is. I've called it meeting type. Say OK. If the general user is allowed to create a column of their own, sometimes in a library, you're more likely to get them to start using SharePoint the way you want them to from a records point of view and from a SharePoint point of view. If you have a look here, I've got minutes down the bottom here, this minutes one, if you can see me highlight there. It already was identified as the PMO. It was already identified by project type of, uh, by document type of minutes, but it could be a pro now I've identified it as a project meeting. Once people understand they have the ability to make a library or a space work the way they want to see it, they will probably start embracing it a little bit more because they can now group the content the way they're used to. So this is a column, but it's a library column. And that means that the owner of the library can create that and add information into it for everybody to use. It's not necessarily right at the top level like these two are. You might want to make it that, that's fine. But encourage, that encouragement, people can see that they can now group things in the way that they like it and logically for the way they want it might start encouraging people to use SharePoint. Again, if you, from a records point of view, don't really care what type of meeting this was with the project meeting, but as long as the division says PMO, which identifies it as a project, you, from a records point of view, can manage it. 
if you're implementing SharePoint, it's a lot to take in, a lot to make sure you capture the the right amount of metadata and the right amount of content types that people will want to use. But it's also about setting it up so that long term, everybody's working the same way, everybody has the same access to the information, and it's all uniform. I hope I've made a little bit of sense. Um, anything that I've mentioned, if you want some clarity on it, please don't hesitate to to drop us a line. Um, you, you've all got the link there um, from the meeting. You can just send us an email. Either I'll um, answer it or some of our other SharePoint uh, specialists will answer any of the questions that you have. But uh, thanks very much for logging in and I look forward to chatting to you again with some more cool SharePoint things in the future. Hope you have a great day. Cheers.